Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's summarize the different ways in which we can use operational amplifiers to accomplish the goal of these amplifiers. For example, we can have an inverting amplifier, which means that the output voltage is going to be the negative of the input voltage times the ratio of the feedback resistor divided by the resistor between the input voltage and the inverting terminal. We can also have the non-inverting amplifier where we connect the input voltage to the non-inverting terminal and we have the feedback loop from the output voltage through the feedback resistor to the resistor which is connected between ground and the inverting terminal. So therefore the output voltage is equal to the input voltage times the ratio of the feedback resistor divided by R1, the resistor between the inverting terminal and ground. We can also have the summing amplifier. This is where we have a number of input voltages connected to their respective resistances, all combined fed into the negative or the inverting terminal. Then we have the feedback resistor, which will then control the output voltage relative to the input voltages. In this particular arrangement, the input voltages are all added, but each of them is multiplied by the ratio of the feedback resistor in the resistor associated with the input voltage. In this case, it's V1 times the ratio of RF to R1, V2 times the ratio of RF to R2, and V2 times the, V3 times the ratio of RF time, divided by R3. Of course, also see that we have the negative sign here because they're all connected to the inverting terminal right there. Then we have what we call the difference amplifier. This is where the output voltage is a ratio of the difference between V2 and V1 and the ratio is determined by RF divided by R1. Again, here we have the feedback resistor RF, which is connected to R1. This is the, that is where we have the resistor connected to V1, which is connected to the inverting terminal. Notice we have a second voltage, V2, connected to the non-inverting terminal, and we have the two resistors, R3 and R4. Now the ratio of R3 and R4 must be the same as the ratio of R1 to the feedback resistor. If that is the case, then the output voltage will be equal to the difference between V2 and V1. Notice it's this voltage minus this voltage, because it's different than the nodes right here, times the ratio of the feedback resistor to the R1 resistor. And finally, one we haven't seen yet, which is called the voltage follower, which we're going to see in the near future here. Notice that we have an operational amplifier, we have a feedback but no resistor on the feedback, and we have the input voltage connected to the non-inverting terminal. In this way, the output voltage will be exactly equal to the input voltage. You may say, well, why do we do it like that? Well, there's reasons, and we'll see those later. But here are five particular ways in which we can connect the operational amplifier to accomplish a particular voltage output. Now that we know that, we'll do some examples of how to connect various circuits to accomplish various goals, or I should say, in this way we can see how the various circuits in which we connect the operational amplifiers can accomplish specific goals in specific circuits. So stay tuned for the follow-up videos, you'll see how these are used in various combinations. That's how it's done.